Hello guys, a little bit of a different video um, for the regular viewers, those of you that aren't regular and you're here for the first time, this is the only video you've seen me do, so it's completely normal. Um, typically I do motorcycle racing vlogs, um, which is how I find myself in this position. It's about one week on now, um, since I had a, quite a big crash, 150 mile an hour. <laughs> Um, on my Honda Fireblade 2024, so it's absolutely, it was a lovely looking bike. Now it's not so lovely. Um, so what we're gonna do is take a look at the damage, try and see how much it's gonna cost to repair. I'm obviously gonna do the majority of the repair work myself, um, but I'll take you along for the journey so you can see exactly what it is that needs replacing, how parts are gonna be fixed, how much it costs, how long it takes, and then finally what it rides like. So. Let's have a look at the damage. So, a bit of damage to myself. I've ended up with a skin graft um, taken from my left thigh. It went all the way through the muscle when I'd ground away at the floor. Um, surprisingly, I didn't do that much damage to the tarmac. I think it kind of won the fight. Um, but here we have the bike. So, I'll switch the camera around and then take you through the damage. Here we can see what the bike looked like before the crash. Really nice condition. Basically, you knew everything. It was immaculate. Despite the crash being the low side, which is where the front loses grip, and because of the high speed of the crash, the bike has dug in and started to flip. That's why we can see it so high in the air. Luckily, there was only me involved. This is what the bike currently looks like. Lots of damage, forks, yokes, clip-ons, rear sets, exhaust, subframes, bodywork, you name it, it's damaged. So I thought rather than walk you around the bike because I don't have too much space, I'll just kind of explain what the damage is and then I'll do a try and show you around the bike. Um, so obviously headstock and forks. Headstock is smashed, it's on the bench. We'll take a look at that in a second. The forks have had to um, go to Mick Shanley at MS Race Development. At least one of the legs is bent, so the tube as well as the stanchion at the bottom. Not sure about the other side yet. They need to come apart to be um, properly checked. Now the handlebars, clip-ons, um, pretty much anything that attached to them was damaged so the right side the brake mass cylinder is actually okay which is nice and um, the lever's got a little bit of a scrape on. All the switch gears smashed though um, including on the left hand side here it's smashed. Um, the clip-on tube's bent on this side it was bent on the right hand side as well and the clutch perch is all scratching things so we're gonna have to just replace all that stuff. Um, petrol tank is okay, all the engine covers are okay, the bike actually runs and the dashboard did survive despite being sent how many meters into the air, I've got no idea. Um, GB racing covers have definitely saved the engine covers. The, the foot pegs on each side, just the actual peg is bent but the rear sets themselves is actually fine. Um, exhaust hanger, that is bent but could possibly straighten. This silencer has got uh, some damage to the to the hanging bracket, but the actual silencer itself is okay. The link pipe has got a bit of a kink in the back of it, so the silencer and link pipe will be going to Marcus uh, or Mark Hill, MHP. Um, he's really good at repairing exhausts and things. I've used him a lot in the past. Obviously, front subframe air intake is gone. The rear subframe is also bent. I haven't actually had the seat unit off yet. Um, so we can do that. Front wheel has got a slight bend in it, but the discs are actually okay. Um, so let's take a look at the headstock and the dashboard. Here we have the clamps. Um, as you can see, they're pretty battered. The stem has snapped as well. It's all it bent before it's snapped. Um, kind of, I guess this stem being such a large diameter is really stiff, but with it being a thin wall, it also means that its shear strength isn't great. Um, you can see there that the, that, it is, that the stem has bent first before it's actually snapped. Um, the upper clamp, also really thin in the area where it's broken out. And I hope this means that the frame is going to be okay. 
but obviously we're gonna to have to get the frame out and get it to Moto Liner, um, who can check if it, the frame is straight or if it is indeed bent, and then they can, you know, advise on jigging it back or replacing the frame, which hopefully, I hope it doesn't come to. Here we have the dashboard. So luckily it survived, as I say, I'm not sure how high in the air it actually went. It was in one of these Bonamici racing, um, like dashboard protectors, which has obviously saved the dashboard. The screen out of this, or the, the lens, has gone. Um, and there's some very light marking on the screen. They're not cracks or anything. Um, and once the screen's actually powered up, you can't really see it. But I probably will try and polish it. Lens restoring kit, so maybe that'll be a uh, fix that. And two of the mountain tabs are snapped on the back. But again, I think this dash is about two and a half thousand pounds, so it works and it will be getting reused. If anyone has a dash, I think it'll be 2020 onwards, um, that the inside doesn't work, but the case is okay. Let me know, because I'll definitely have that off you. Here you can see me removing the seat. Now the seat pad was okay, which I was pleased about because I actually fiberglassed that myself and then trimmed it with the foam. So pleased that that survived. With the seat unit removed, then emptied the fuel tank of fuel using a siphon, removed the battery and then removed the fuel tank. to be removing all of the ancillaries so we need to remove the air box the air intake injectors throttle bodies um exhaust radiator oil cooler um yeah basically every it needs to be just a rolling bike when it goes to motor liner um or whoever else does it but it probably will be motor liner and obviously in order to be rolling, it needs to keep the engine in because the rear shock attaches to the engine. So as much stuff out of the bike as possible. Now, obviously it's not gonna be able to go until we've got some headstock, a headstock on there and some forks and the front wheel back in. So it's just a case of getting as much of this apart as I can. And then we'll go inside and we'll try and get an idea of how much this is gonna cost. So here you are, we're inside. I'm on the Fowler's website. Probably a good place to start, um, if not, you know, eBay. So if we just go down the list there, we've got intake, front subframe, switch gear, throttle, clutch perch and lever, reservoir, forks, front wheel, top and bottom yoke, steering damper. Um, and then on top of that, things that fowls don't sell. So repairing the exhaust, bodywork, which is HRC only at the moment, a thousand pound. Graphics, clip on tube, screen, GB racing covers, thumb brake, dash protector, rear wheel pull cup and lock stops. So I think all the things you can't get off Fowler's website is about £2,400. Um, and then you'll see that the total for Fowler's is about £15,891. Now, that is probably more than you'd expect. And the reason for that is, well, let's just go to the garage. I just come to the garage to check the headstock cups make sure that the bearings are okay um it looks as though the cups are damaged but also there's some significant damage to the frame so i'll show you that now so i can see that the cup top one looks okay the bottom one has got some marks so obviously that cup would need replacing um, but as i've looked at the rest of the frame around the headstock area can see it's actually got a hole in there. So this frame is probably for the bin. Well, as I've demonstrated in this video, the damage to the fire blade is significant and total cost so far is about £18,300. That's obviously buying a lot of parts brand new and hopefully we can get second hand parts along the way to bring that price down because that is an awful lot of money and I don't have that kind of money. Um, I am running a little bit of a donation thing, so if anyone wants to get involved, there'll be a QR code on the screen now, and you can do so. Um, if not, like, subscribe, share the video, tell your friends about it if you found it interesting, and I'll see you in the next episode. Bye.